Now nah, we're gonna get fucking ripped apart by Pearl Jam fans. <laughs> My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am, I am Joe Opinionated. Today on Desert Island Deathmatch, we're dealing with one of the greatest bands from the Northwest, Pearl Jam. Who better to have on than somebody that's a bigger Pearl Jam fan than I am? He's got some mad skills. He's a he's an artist. He likes to sing and he's put some music out there. Check him out on. DC Repairs, I believe it is, and he can tell you a bit more. Brian, welcome to the channel. Thanks, Joe, man. This is awesome. Okay, well, I'll be honest. First of all, to correct you, I'm not probably a bigger Pearl Jam fan than you. I actually I kind of like grunge music. Oh, I fucking love grunge music. I've always been into it. They weren't my number one growing up, I'll be honest. Probably Soundgarden took the cake on that for me. Um, but yeah, I've always loved that style of music, I've always loved Pearl Jam, been a big fan my whole life. Only saw them live once. I'm really stoked to be on the show. And uh, just preparing for this has taught me a lot about Pearl Jam, which is awesome. So that, yeah, man. That tends to happen. So where did you see them that one time you saw them? Vancouver 2013 Lightning Bolt Tour, uh, Rogers Arena. I can't remember who opened. Somebody on here will know, put it in the comments. But to be honest, yeah, I went for Pearl Jam, so it didn't matter. It wasn't a huge band. I can't remember who opened, um, but fuck, it was awesome, man. And I've waited for them to come back. I think they came to Pemberton Fest, but I wasn't able to see that, but I'm still waiting. They're going to come back soon. How many times have you seen them, Joe? Zilch. No? Yeah, I've only I the only Pearl Jam show I saw was Eddie Vedder's first show, first solo show. So that was kind of cool. And he wore... Where, where, where was that? It was in Vancouver. It was, yeah. God, where was it? I feel like it might have been the center of performing arts. Yeah, it was really cool. I was with another big, uh, big Pearl Jam fan and uh, Eddie came out and he was, it was something to do with his shirt. It was the shirt that he wore at the first Pearl Jam gig, I want to, something like that. Dude, this is the other crazy thing I got to add with the Pearl Jam fan base is like, maybe that's why I've always like not quite gotten into them fully because like these 10 club members that I know, man, you can't fuck with those guys. It's like Slayer level of fan. Grunge royalty. And Pearl Jam and Nirvana are really the definition of grunge to me after doing yeah. this. And so for so many years, I understand that Soundgarden and Alice in Chains are also grunge. And to be honest with you, I'm bigger fans of those bands. Grunge is like really like it's such a multi-layered genre. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, it grabs from so many different piles, but also it's, it's kind of original to Seattle too, just because I guess they said that not a lot of music was going up that way. And yeah. they were just kind of coming up with their own stuff. So anyway, so we're going to do the Desert Island Deathmatch today for Pearl Jam. And uh, oh yeah, I'm wearing a, uh, the Vetter Dixon flannel. I'm always wearing the Rock and the Dixons. Give me a sponsorship for fuck's sakes. I love Harlem shirt. Just representing my favorite part of Manhattan. This is my, this is my Lightning Bolt tour shirt. Oh, sweet. I got two. I got one. My mother-in-law went to see them in Pemberton years after and so she bought me one there i can't find it but yeah that's awesome it doesn't fit it's a crop top now but you can't tell it's shrunk a little bit pearl jam desert island death match uh so first we're doing our desert island playlist we're going to do two at a time i go first because i'm the oldest my first pick for my desert island playlist we are, we're both picking 10 this is what i take to my own desert island for pearl jam and uh, it's, this has been really tricky. We actually started off, we were gonna do 20. Whittling down to 10 turned out to be a really difficult task. Uh, these are not in order. So from 2020's Gigaton, giga I'm gonna be taking Parachutes. It just reminds me of so much of a Beatles song. I go through Beatles things right now, I'm in one, you know? Yeah, hell yeah. So that's like part of this grunge thing that I'm talking about where it's just like, so many things in one. The next song on my Desert Island playlist for Pearl Jam is actually a B-side for Jeremy from 19 whatever that is, their first album. The B-side's a very famous one, Yellow Leadbetter. And uh, a sing-along, beautiful song, uh, prefer it live. Uh, I The only live ones I actually own is this one over my shoulder, which is live at the Gorge. 
which my buddy Bob was at those shows. Awesome. I actually bought that because I had the uh, I Won't Back Down cover, the Tom Petty cover. I ended up just falling in love with Pearl Jam, live Pearl Jam through those shows. And it's kind of cool to find out that like some bros were at them. Growing up in high school, a buddy of mine, uh, actually it was my girlfriend at the time's brother in the 10 Club, die her Pearl Jam fan, wicked guitar player, and uh, Owen Jenkins, shout out. But he taught me the solo in Yellow Lab Better. I was like one of the first kind of actual solos I learned on guitar. Fuck. Sick solo. So Brian, two for your Desert Island playlist, Pearl Jam. Let's hear it. First pick from me. Um, I had a hard time finding even what album this came from because I wasn't into them in 1999. It came off a charity album for, I think it was like Kosovo War, Kosovo War at the time for refugees from that off No Boundaries, I think it was called. Um, either a hugely famous song played on the radio all the time. My first pick is Last Kiss. Yeah, that was like a high school favorite. It's a good one to go drive and just chill. Second song, you did Gigaton for your second pick, I think it was. So I'm going to go with Gigaton as well. I'm taking their, like, I think it was probably their, I don't know if it was the single off that album, but it was like a funky, funky beat. Uh, Dance of the Clairvoyance. Just a sick little beat throughout the whole thing. I like Eddie Vedder's voice in it. Their first album in 1991 was 10. Huge, huge hit. That's how I found about them. And Pearl Jam was kind of weird where it was like, when Pearl Jam came out, like nobody knew who they were, but then the next day, everybody fucking knew who they were. They were, they were that big. They were as big as Nirvana at the time. Like they were, they were huge. 1993, Versus. 1994, Vitalogy. 1996, No Code. 1998 yield 2000 by neural really good album actually riot act 2002 avocado uh 2006 backspacer 2009 lightning bolt 2013 gigaton 2020 so next uh comes off of for me on my pearl jam desert island playlist comes off of their debut record 10 the song is black the live version of the song on the unplugged album mtv unplugged or whatever that was was my favorite for sure it was super cool the original is great too so jeremy was the song that really brought Pearl Jam to my radar because I discovered a lot of music through music videos and it's one of the greatest music videos of all time. Black came to me uh, later, even after Versus. I, th I think it was after that, maybe around the time Vitalogy came out when I circled back to 10 and got into Black. What, on Spotify, Apple right now, what's the number one played song by Pearl Jam? Uh, da Daughter. Even Flow. I know, I mean, it's like, it didn't really surprise me, but I was like, I would have thought it would have been Daughter... Black. That's one of my favorites. It means a lot to me and uh, the old lady as well. The next one on my Desert Island playlist comes off of Vitalogy. I think that's 1994. And the song is Not For You. Really tough, man. I, yeah, even with, even with Black. I mean, narrowing this thing down to 10 songs. <laughs> You it's want, impossible. It's dude. impossible, yeah. especially with the early records for me. Anyways, I had like four or five from each each one of the first three records that I had to get rid of. I'll go with the Lightning Bolt album. Now, uh, 2013, that concert that I was at, obviously played a lot of these songs. And Pendulum is my third pick. It's an unreal tune, like just really weird, uh, nice recording, but sounds in the background. At the time, Eddie Vedder was swinging on, like, balls were hanging down, lights and huge, massive balls. He's swinging on them, pouring wine from, I think he gave a shout out to, like, our Okanagan, which, go up to the Okanagan on a wine tour in BC. He gave a shout out to, like, the Okanagan wine. Should I get a glass of red wine for him tonight? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, cheers, Joe. Cheers. Bro. And, um, yeah, that song stuck with me, Pendulum. That's like the most wicked, like, if you're not in a really good mood at work or something and you're just feeling dark, just put that song on and just like have a nice strong cup of black coffee and you'll be all right with that one. Somebody will know, but I think this must be the most syllables in its song name from them. And I can never remember it. I call it Elderly Woman. Uh, but for this show, I'll call it Elderly Woman Behind the counter at a 7-Eleven in Ladysmith. I get giddy when they play it once in a while on the radio. It doesn't make the radio that often, but when it does, fuck yeah. So that's my fourth pick. Next up on my Desert Island playlist for Pearl Jam off of 1996's No Code. The song is Hail Hail. And it's one of the bigger hits off the album. Surprisingly, I thought I liked No Code more than I do. Because when I went back to review them, I just didn't pull as many hits out. And it's kind of, that was sort of, 
a bit of a drop off for me. The yield was a different story. Yeah, once again, yeah, the hardcores are gonna murder me on that one. But uh, oh, for sure, man. But no code kind of flew under my radar too until a certain point. I definitely went back to it, listened to it nonstop. Yeah, you know, they've had a lot of amazing, talented, amazing musicians, and it's so original. And at the same time, there's lots of tributes to their idols, I guess. I did. I only recently realized that Eddie Vedder inducted R.E.M. into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But when I was first listening to this, and I did a, a on my channel, Joe Opinionated, this channel that you're watching right now, I did an episode before and uh, on R.E.M., sorry, and R.E.M., insane amount of songs incredible songwriters honestly and kind of underrated oh, it's really similar band man i never p put the two together no they don't I sound said, really anything alike it's because they, they obviously have different voices and different sounds they but. don't but this the way that they write the songs and the way that they go through the song you know the just the song structure in general is very similar it, and original both of them are different. Well, no, and you could read each of the each of their band's lyrics like poems. Good songwriters, both of them. Yeah, and Pearl Jam's a crazy one. They weren't just popular with kids. Pearl Jam was just Dave Letterman's favorite band. It's just a unanimous, like these guys are great. <laughs> yeah. This story gets shitty. Like, and I have to pick I I've got to have another song from uh 10, Pearl Jam 10. The album's a masterpiece, start to finish. I honestly think the first like Three albums are actually masterpieces start to finish, but it's per it's a perfect record. It sounds so much different than verses, and I love and I love verses. That's great. That's like the Neil Young, right? That's the other huge influence, obviously. But just the way that each album's really quite different from the last. Anyways, ten. I've got to go with another one. These songs just take me to a place. Every single song on ten verses and vitality just transport me. Anyways, I'm going with Ocean. Just a pretty song, and it's just one of those ones like even flow where it's like, it just takes you to a place, that's Pearl Jam, you know? Evil and Flow, Oceans, that's how, when I first discovered it. Fifth pick, I'm gonna go from the 1994 album Vitalogy, Better Man. I like to sing, that's what I do. I mean, I can do a few other things just so I can sing in front of other people, but um, yeah, I gotta go with Better Man, man. I, this song, I, <clears throat> My, one of my first, like, you remember the Foundry? Karaoke the shit out of this song back in the days and showed it to the Foundry. Love the Foundry. Uh, I gotta go back to Black and uh, 10, or sorry, Black from 10, 1991. <laughs> That's good. Back to Black. <laughs> Okay, let's hear him, Joe. We need seven and eight. And they've got a bunch of songs where you're like, shit, that's one of the best songs ever written. These guys are up there with like Tom Petty and kings of songwriting. Here's something fun. We just did Black Crows, Desert Island Deathmatch. Chris Robinson's lyrics suck. She talks to angels, okay, but the lyrics are just so weak. And then and then I go into Eddie Vedder. And I can't even skip the songs because I need to know how the story ends. For me, for my Desert Island playlist, Joe Opinionated, you're on the channel. Remember to like and subscribe to shit. Be normal. Live and let live. The next one on the Desert Island playlist for me, Pearl Jam, uh, comes off of Ride Act from 2002. The song is I Am Mine. The melodies that are created through the music, and the music is amazing. It's not just the mu amazing music. The melodies that he creates through this thing are incredible melodies. It's got it down. My eighth pick comes off of Binaural. The song is Light Years, and it's another... You know what? Like I was told that my list is kind of like an amateur list. I think this is I think this is just turning into me and Joe aren't absolutely diehard Pearl Jam fans. <laughs> We're just here to drink red wine yeah. and talk about cool music. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope you're fucking entertained. This was maybe your first or second pick, but I'm going to also the B side of the Jeremy album, Yellow Lab Better. Just I learned to play this solo, I think one of the first absolutely cool licks that I could just like rally off and play on guitar and it stuck with me and it's just that opening down 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 it's just so fucking cool now we're gonna get fucking ripped apart by Pearl Jam fans <laughs> shout out to Manzavino's and Nanaimo Ooh, because yeah. I'm pretty sure they had that in like in the original jukebox or maybe it was actually Dude. no maybe it was Fast Eddie's like I'm going way back now I think it might have been Fast Eddie's had this on the on the back to back. I think that's the only place as an adult that I went to Manzanitos, where I had a. It was like two in the morning after the Queens. I went there, had a cup of black coffee, and I smoked a cigarette inside. 
And I, as you know, I mean, I'm sure you had a couple years where you could do that. Like I remember the Miller's pub had that late. You could go into a little smoking room, the Wellington pub. But Manzavino's was like the last place. And I went there and I remember at two in the morning. Manzavino's, good shout out. I definitely had a lot of cigarettes at Manzavino's. We used to go get poutine or like get French fries. I didn't even eat the French fries. I'd just go there and smoke and drink coffee. But yeah. you had to buy food. So you'd order like a thing of French fries or a thing of poutine. And it would just sit on the table and just sit there and drink coffee. And I'm not and making this up, right? They were open late. Like, oh, yeah. Like, no, yeah, yeah. They were after the, they were, after the, it was great. I used to go, I used to go there at like fucking one in the morning all the time. I mean, oh, yeah. Okay. Shout out to, I got a pen to point out, uh, yield. I bought this from you, sir, yeah. Joe. And hopefully I don't wake up my kids, but it's like 98, this album came out. I didn't really listen to it that much at that time. I mean, I was 11 years old, but like still, I was more into Bush X actually. Speaking about grunge, we haven't mentioned like the little side bands. Bush X was great, but back to my eighth pick, Yield. <laughs> that was fucked up. <laughs> but do the evolution, Yield. Rounding out my playlist. This is it, this got really, really fucking hard. Honestly, this was a long time. The ones that didn't make it: Even Flow, Corduroy, Elderly Woman, Blood from Binaural, Rival, Do the Evolution, Worldwide Suicide, Dissident, Alive, and the runner-up for my playlist: Man of the Hour from the Big Fish soundtrack. But that's more because that's one of my favorite movies. Check out my Tim Burton. Top 10 on this channel, Joe Opinionated. The next one on my list, Daughter from Versus 1993 or whatever, 92. They put out like three albums in two years. It's a Pearl Jam standard. I could not stop playing this when it came out. Had Versus at the house. Thought it was so cool. Yeah, same same here. I like, see it there. I Hell love yeah. Versus. And the next pick for me is another standard, maybe the greatest song they ever wrote, uh, Pearl Jam Tan, I'm going with Jeremy. One of the greatest music videos of all time. I talked about Radiohead having a few of the top music videos of all time. Pearl Jam's definitely up there. Jeremy walked in front of his class and, and ended his life in front of his class. It's really horrible. Just a crazy song. What I remember was just watching them sing it live. It was on like MTV Music Awards or some sort of music show. Uh, maybe the Grammys, maybe the American Music Awards. But that's when you got to see the artists perform live. When I was a kid, that was it. You watch, you made sure you watched those award shows because you're going to see Guns N' Roses or Metallica or one of these big Michael Jackson, something like that. I remember seeing this one and not knowing who they were, but then hearing them do Belt Out Jeremy, I think it was. The other thing that we haven't mentioned before we get into my picks here is PJ 20 for me was huge. It got me back in that DVD documentary, PJ 20. Whoever's watching this, if you guys haven't seen PJ 20, watch it. One thing that took my love of Pearl Jam up was Eddie Vedder's tribute to Gord Downey. Tragically hip in Canada, the lead singer had terminal cancer and they did one last tour, one of the biggest bands in Canada. It was a big deal. Anyway, it's their last show. One third of all Canadians watched on television. So that's the equivalent to over 100 million Americans. It was a heartbreak. The same night Pearl Jam had a, a concert down in the States. He just said we want to send our love up to Canada and you know there's something going on up there tonight. It was really beautiful. Check it out. I had a lot of respect for that. Let's hear your last two songs for your Desert Island playlist for Pearl Jam. Talk a little bit about the struggle. It is on an album, a live version, and I have to give shout back to like Andy Wood, Crown of Thorns. You can find it. I looked it up because I've had to. I think it comes out on the PJ20. I think there's a special release live album with that. You can hear an Eddie Vedder version of the Mother Love Bone. The Mother Love Bone obviously being the origin band of Pearl Jam. Um, so like I had to include them in this, um, so crown of thorns, I know you're probably going to get lit up online and that's not a Pearl Jam song, but you know what? It actually is. It's got like every member minus Eddie Vedder. Oh dude, my last one. Okay. Number 10, my number 10 pick off versus uh review mirror. That's a song that just like get into like a nice car, hit the gas and just go. It fires me up every single time. Eddie Vedder just slays the chorus. If I had to go with like one song that I absolutely love that should have made it was Just Breathe. I love, absolutely love that song. It's super chill. Okay, so now it's time for the Desert Island Death Match where Brian and I will be killing off each other's picks because we're moving to the same fucking Desert Island. And uh, on the uh, list of sitting ducks, I'm just going to quickly read them off. From Brian's list, our last kiss. 
Dance of the Clairvoyance, Pendulum, Elderly Woman, Better Man, Do the Evolution, Crown of Thorns, Rearview Mirror, and from my list, the best list on the fucking internet, really. Best playlist you've probably ever seen, but vote in the comments below. For my list, the ones are Parachutes, Not For You, Oceans, Hail Hail, I Am Mine, Light Years, Jeremy, Daughter, Desert Island, Deathmatch, Brian Goes First, so Brian gets to eliminate. We just go one, 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 back and forth. The two that made it through, sorry, were Black and Yellow Leadbetter. So those are two songs that both of us picked for our Desert Island playlist. Right. So we now we we knock four off each other's list and we get a top ten. Exactly. Yeah. That's Wait. that's how it's supposed to work. But my math is never good. So my first question, my first question on the Desert Island will be afraid or like hungry or well fed. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm picturing a lot of like cigarettes and wine and just like things like that, like jelly beans and shit. And oh, I think we're already on the desert island right now then. We're drinking wine and our families have left us. We, so. don't, we, don't go to, we don't go to work. There's lots of food. Okay, so I get to eliminate two of your songs, dude? Uh, no, one. Uh, I'm cutting Hail Hail. I'm kind of okay with that. That's probably my least favorite out of those songs, to be honest with you. Um, next, uh, first song I'm going to get rid of is uh, Crown of Thorns. My second song that I'm cutting out of your list... I'm going light years. Light years is gone. The next off your list is the dance of clairvoyance. Why? Because I can't quite remember which one that one was. Was that the hit? Yeah, I think it was the single. Okay. It was the yeah, it was definitely one of the two singles. Off I that, do yeah. like the singles, honestly. But yeah, I'm gonna no, does it, I hear you. Does, it's just outside. It did. I'm pretty sure that's on. I'll double check. I'm pretty sure that's on my top 25 or whatever. It, tur it turned out to be 26 songs. That I okay. started with when I narrowed it down to 10. I don't want to do this, but I got to cut Daughter, man. I just, I've heard, you know, one of those songs, you just, yeah, you never did it for me that well. And it, I've heard it too many times. So I think it was originally called Brother. So sorry, brother, but I got to cut out Daughter. Next one I'm going with is Last Kiss. That was one that I had a gas station job and they had one of those satellite radio subscriptions in it where they only played 40 songs. And Last Kiss was on that, and so was Solid as a Rock. Do you know what that song is? Maybe the worst song ever. There's this movie called Ghost World, and uh, in this movie, this this girl brings this uh, nerdy Steve Buscemi home to her house, and she's like, and she's like, I know you're, I know you're into blues music, so you should listen to this this uh, band called Blues Hammer. And anyways, af after that, she brings him home and she plays uh, Solid as a Rock. It's like this really like adult contemporary. Oh, God, I don't know. It's a, it's it's probably like a big hit. I'm sorry to whoever sings it. It's just not my cup of tea. Too Much Last Kiss. There's just a few songs on that where I could like the the Pay Paradise and Put Up a Parking Lot, the Counting Crows version was one of them. These songs that just are dead to me. I can't fucking listen to them anymore. And that's one of them. Desert Island okay. Deathmatch. So my last pick for you is not for you. Um, I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to get rid of Pendulum. So that's it. So that's our Desert Island Deathmatch. The final playlist is, has been formed. We've uh, we've killed off some, some picks. The final playlist is as follows. Black from 10, Yellow Leadbetter makes it through. The B-side from Jeremy, Elderly Woman in a fucking long story in Ladysmith 7-Eleven or <laughs> in a ditch. Better Man, yeah. uh, Do the Evolution, Rearview Mirror, not in my top 20. I don't know why. That's one song where I just never... Oh, really? Yeah, it's sort of... I don't know why. Parachutes, which is just kind of new to me, so I'm kind of glad I made it through because that's, that's what I'm listening to. Uh, Oceans, which is just, yeah... Muddy, yeah. muddy is More, the definition of grunge. <laughs> More ten, really yeah. cool. Uh, I am mine, also very cool. And hell yeah, and Jeremy alive, alive, yeah. alive didn't make our list, which is another one. Animal is another one. Brian, once again, you want to tell them where they can find you on the internet if they want to For check sure, out man. some of your stuff because I definitely follow Brian. He's got some pretty cool content, especially if you're a bit of a gearhead, that'll help too. And also the music stuff. So where can they find you, Brian? Thanks, man. Um, yeah, so you can, right now I'm doing a lot of mechanic stuff online. YouTube uh, tag is BC Repairs. Um, I just upload funny mechanic related stuff to that because that's what I do for a living. Um, and there's like a little side hobby. I'm obviously just into music like Joe is. 
um, yeah, playing in a band called the Shot Monkeys, a little like gearhead band that we put together, a bunch of mechanics. Um, yeah, you can basically find all of the stuff that I do on YouTube. Yeah. And there'll Thanks, be a, there'll be a link in the description for that as well, so you can Wait. just check out the description and uh, and at the end of the video as well, I'll send you into some stuff from Brian. Um, so check the little link at the end of the video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. Um, it helps share it. Um, it's also on the other platforms. So if you want to go on to Spotify, you can check out the this podcast there as well. Apple. There's a few different versions of this video as well. Yeah, this is really cool to just research one band. It's just so cool to pick one, dive into it. Yeah. I learned a lot coming on here. Found out things that I had no idea about Pearl Jam. Sheer Sujo. That was how, awesome. How much time do you need to do another one? Who are we doing? I don't know, man. Who are we Elton doing? Elton John would be dope. Elton would be really cool. Thanks again, Brian, for being on this episode. Remember to vote all that. Sh live and let live. Pearl Jam. Mad respect to all the members in the group. Sorry, this wasn't like a history of Pearl Jam episode. This is just sort of shit we bring to a desert island. It's our favorite songs. Yeah, these are, these are our faves. And so we're just putting it out there. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little low on facts and high, and high on, opinions. on opinions. Respect <laughs> to Pearl Jam. Respect to Brian. Thanks for being on the episode. Thank you, Joe, man. That was awesome. We'll see you on the next episode. Uh, shit. That, uh, next up actually is Radflix. So 1980 to 1995. Every year it's got their own categories, comedy, horror, drama, most watched, best movie, and who, who action. are you doing this one with? I've got six people, six people that have voted, put their list through, normal fucking people. Radflix is coming up and uh, check out my channel. There's over a hundred episodes featuring bands and movies, uh, no television, uh, just because there's too much of it. I can't fucking narrow it down. Peace. Check this guy out. Peace, Joe. Submerged at sea Days and weeks at a time Ninety-six million pounds of steel go swimming by I see your eyes surveying in the mirror on the tide. Am I overstating this need to make it right? Cause I know the reason why you have.